Hey folks, Joseph A. Savoy here, and getting to the holiday spirit, I'm about to review a holiday classic that came out in the 80s. You know what it is. It's called A Christmas Story. Yep, a classic holiday film from the 80s about a young boy, which is right here, named Ralphie, who all he wants for Christmas is a Red Ryder BB gun. Yep. And this is the film I've been watching many times during Christmas, especially when it aired you know, back in the 80s, when, when it was on HBO. Though I was born in 1985, and the movie did air it on HBO. Of course, I didn't have cable until the late 80s, because I had select TV at the time. And I don't think, although I wasn't so sure if Select TV had played the film, but nevertheless, I, I always watch this movie anytime. I never get tired of it. It's the movie where, you know, you really want to see what's happening, you know, even though Ralphie definitely wants a BB gun for Christmas. A lot of strange things have happened throughout the film, but it's also the fact that it's based on an adaptation of a Gene Shepherd's book, yeah, in God We Trust, all others pay cash. But one of my favorite scenes in this movie, yeah, was when Ralphie's father, you know, since he's always been furious about getting a new uh, furnace, since the old furnace has been, you know, busted many times, and and of course all the dogs from the neighborhood next door keeps going around chasing him around the block, you know, once he started to get into the house and everything. When they were just about to get a uh, Christmas tree, and they already got one at that point, suddenly the one of the tires had blew, and he was about to change the tire with Ralphie uh, helping his father by being able to remove all the bolts out of there, and then suddenly he knocked the, all these bolts up in the air and fell down the ground, and he actually said, get this, oh, fudge! And the narrator, you know, Dean Shepard said, Though I didn't say fudge, I said the big one, the cream mutter of all dirty words, the F dash 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 word. <laughs> yeah, and that's what leads to the conclusion where he had to, that bar in his mouth, you know, filled with soap and all this crap that they put inside the bottle, you know, because of, because of what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is the 40s, though, but, yeah, this is not something you would hear in a movie like this, but it worked. <laughs> yeah, that's why it was a classic. But there were a lot of memorable moments I'm going to get to uh, once I review this movie, because it's, it's a treat. You would watch this 24 hours during Christmas on TBS. You know, I know they even did it on TNT when they had the, the 20th anniversary in 2003. And all these other ones that follow, so, yeah. So let's get right to it. The movie stars Peter Billingsley, who went on to do several pictures, including um, the movie with Vince Spawn called The Breakup. He also Four Christmases. Melinda Dillon, who later went on to do the film Harry and the Hendersons, and I know she was in that, uh, that episode in The Twilight Zone uh, from the 80s where she actually wears a necklace and it has a device inside where he actually screams the word SHUT UP! and then everybody freezes so yeah she can actually freeze time doing all this other stuff and then at random and then she screams start talking <laughs> and they move back yeah, I remember that episode. And yeah, especially at the, the end where you know what's going to happen. Also, the film is Gene Shepard doing Ralphie's voice yeah, as an adult, sort of in the tradition of, of his uh, adaptation. And this was long before the one years when they had uh, Daniel Stern doing the adult voice for, for Kevin Arnold, yeah, Fred Savage. Darren McGavin. Yeah. We went on to do other films too, including Raw Deal with Arnold Schwarzenegger and many others that follow. Scott Schwartz, who played Flick, 
He went on to do the film Kitco and other stuff. Zach Ward, you know, Scott Farkas, The Bully. <laughs> yeah. Who actually went on to do um, several uh, shows and movies, and including the TV show Titus that I used to watch um, when it aired on Fox. Yeah, I know Anaya. Ian Petrella and Teddy Moore who also went on to do the sequel to a Christmas story called My Summer Story also known as It Runs in the Family you know, the sequel so it's, at least she replies the role for that it's all the actors that play it's written by Gene Shepard once again with Ed Brown and Bob Clark and it's directed by Bob Clark, who also directed the film, the first two Porky's movies, as well as Black Christmas, and of course, those Baby Geniuses movies. But thank goodness he directed this movie, and that's why it's one of the best films ever made. He even directed the film from the hip from 1987 with Judd Nelson from The Breakfast Club. Yeah. Also stars Devin McGavin as well. Yeah. John Hurt. Yeah. But this is the movie you never get tired of. The movie begins set in the 40s Indiana town called Holman. A nine-year-old kid named Ralphie Parker who's played by Peter Binsley who really wants something for Christmas like any other kid would want at the time. A Red Rider carbon action 200 shot range model air rifle with a compass and stock and with and has a fiend that tells time that was one of his biggest desire moments that he ever wanted and in fact he even dreams about it any time especially that scene where you know he was dressed up you know, as a sheriff you know, trying to shoot all these bad guys you know that's going after the Parker family anyway Prior to this, though, his mother, who was played by Melinda Dillon, actually asked the same warning like his teacher, Ms. Shields, as well as the department store Santa Claus, you know, later in the film. They all gave him the same warning, as you may have heard many times in the movie, this one particular warning. You'll shoot your eye out. That's right. The same line that they've been said many times and become the most memorable quote uh, in the entire film is, you shoot your eye out. Oh boy. Well, things gets a little tough for Ralphie because during the time, you know, he's hanging out with his friends, including Flick and Schwartz. Basically, you know, his idea was this. They go to school, they write a Christmas poem about, about what they want for Christmas. So they basically write down everything they, they needed, so he thought this would actually help. Um, during that time, even with his younger brother, Randy, he was played by Ian Petrella, wearing his, uh, already being covered with his jacket, and you know, he had to wear so many of them, as well as covering his mouth, and he couldn't move his arms. <laughs> I can't get up! And they always cry all the time. Before they went to school, they'd been chased by a bully named Scott Farkas, who played by Zach Ward, along with his partner. And they go around like, scaring them half to death, you know, and they're chasing them around all the time. But then, even during that day, you know, Flick and Schwartz, you know, both played by Scott Schwartz and Artie Robb, wants up doing something completely stupid by sticking their tongue on an ice pole yeah which has already been frozen so this was one of their bets by saying I double dog dare ya I triple dog dare ya and once Flick finally did it yeah it really did got stuck in the pole and yeah that's when they had the fire department and the cops to rescue him from that pole and yeah they took took some time to get him out until he finally did 
Yeah, poor guy. When they went back home, you know, Ralphie's father just won in a major award and contest, which he doesn't even know until later on when they finally deliver it. Turns out to be this one famous scene. Fragile! It must be Italian! I think it says fragile, dear. Yeah. Or, yeah, the father is played by uh, Darren McGavin. Also referred to him as the old man. Well, when he finally got his delivery, it turns out to be a biggest surprising prize of all time. A lamp that shape of a leg wearing a fishnet stocking. Resembles a Neve beverage company. Yep, a woman's leg. And, and he was so overjoyed by the lamp that all of a sudden Mrs. Parker does not like it at all. And actually had a few over it because by that time, as adult Ralphie refers to as the Battle of the Lamp, you know, they were like battling each other. When his father was already being furious by the, the furnace once again, yeah, because he's always been furious with the furnace all the time. She accidentally knocked it over as a result of this, especially with that profanity rant that, that actually had started it all. He had to try to find some glue to glue it all back together again once it's all broken into pieces. And then he had to bury it. That sucks. Because that was such a major reward that he, he had offered after all this time. And this is what they get. And I really love that lake lamp they use in the film. It's, uh, it's very sexy when you look at it, especially when it lights up. Yeah, I, I wish I had that lamp. I know they have that in stores anywhere you can even get it on Christmas if you get a chance because it's the most famous iconic scene that they had in the movie yeah but before Christmas Eve you know when they won up on vacation after you know after Ralphie already received the bad news gave him a lousy grade on his note they gave him the, the same message you'll shoot your eye out once again Scott Fawkes had had actually threw a snowball on him and his glasses threw outside and he started crying and then and got so very furious about this that he he finally beat the shit out of him yeah, I know I'm part of my language on this one but that's okay I always say the yes word yeah and boy he had to beat the crap out of him all this time until suddenly his nose was bleeding uh, right straight to his face yeah there well, yeah, all the blood was gouging right in his face and started crying too. And then he also he even started cursing too. So yeah, you just feel sorry for Ralphie after all this trouble he's been going through. By the time Christmas Eve follows, you know, after they went to a parade and they went inside the department store to meet Santa Claus, and yeah, all the kids were screaming. Yeah, while they're already in line. Yeah, a lot of kids and everybody were in line. All the way up on top of the slide. While his brother actually went up there and, and he, he and he screams. Ralphie actually went up there while the one of the department store elves started dragging him. You know, already getting a little furious because the store was closing. Yeah, it was. Ralphie was already, you know, all blanked out. You know, he couldn't remember what he what he really wanted. He couldn't even say anything. And <laughs> and while, you know, Santa Claus was about about to dump him into the slide and yeah, he finally stopped and he, and he says as we speak I want a Red Rider Cabin Action 200 shot range rifle air rifle and the department store Santa says as as we speak you shoot your eye out kid Merry Christmas and then he puts his uh, his foot on on, the, on him and he says Ho, ho, ho! And then Ralphie slides all the way down and, says, and screams, Whoa! <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I get over that too. It's just, it's just fun. Well, once they finally went home, they decorated the entire tree on Christmas Eve, and then, then they all went back to sleep, waiting for Christmas morning to arrive, and as it did, Yep, they finally got all the presents, including Ralphie wants of wearing a a pink bunny. Oh, jeez, 
a deranged pink bunny suit that one of his aunts gave him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame him. It, it's, it was awful. But then, after all this time, he finally got the, the one gift that he's been waiting for all this time when he when he finally wrapped it up. He got his Red Rider BB gun. Yep. He wanted to try it out to see how it goes. And then, yeah, as he, as he expected, he did shoot his eye out. Yeah. But things started to get even worse after that. He accidentally broke his glasses. So he thought that you know he might have hit his glasses on a on some branch or something. Well, after that, even worse things started to happen during Christmas morning. Was when all the dogs started started rushing all the way to Mr. Parker's house into the kitchen, and suddenly all their food has been has been eaten up to pieces. Yep, their turkey. That's right. So as a result of this, they went to a Chinese restaurant for Christmas, and they wound up ordering a duck. And yeah, I remember that scene where, yeah, the Chinese restaurant guys was about to sing Tears of Season to be jolly, but they keep getting the, the words wrong. It's just so funny, and then when they finally got the duck, they, they cut the head, and <laughs> they had a good time, and, and when night came along, and, you know, it was very snowing at the time on Christmas, and you know, Ralph Lee was in his bed you know, with his Red Rider BB gun, and, and adult Ralph Lee was telling him that he had the best Christmas of all time with his family. So, the movie ends, and there you go. And you just never get tired of this movie. <laughs> yeah, I really love this movie a lot. I would watch this movie many times on Christmas, especially on Blu-ray. Yeah, the, and by the way, the Blu-ray that I got was from 2008. Yeah, this was the 2006 disc that they put inside, but they just changed the cover art, but, so it makes it even more special than before. So yeah. Which unfortunately, um, the audio in this one was only in, in Dolby Digital 1.1 you know, mono. Yeah, since this movie was shot in mono, it was never in stereo. It would have sounded better in stereo, actually. That's exactly how they, they put it when the film came out. But Warner Brothers wanted to encode it with a BCI you know, picture quality for this. Um, I already heard that they have a new Blu-ray, and this time they put a few more extras, which all the other extras are already intact on this set. And the audio with a DTS HD Master lossless audio, so it sounds even better than ever. Unfortunately, the picture quality remains the same, which I think it deserves a better remaster, like maybe a 4K even. But nevertheless, it still looks good on Blu-ray, uh, even for a 2006 one. And I love all the extras they had in the film. You know, tons of great extras coming from the 2003 DVD. Yeah, everything that they put into the film was just amazing. But maybe someday I'll try to see if I can, I can find another Blu-ray for this to see if I can, I can try to um, get the one with the, with the new extras and everything. So that way it, it'll be complete. And I always will keep this because this is a classic cover that I really love, and I, I do prefer the original cover art. That's the movie poster, but. This one is, is fine by me. And it's one of the original Blu-rays cases that they have, so... Better than those Echo Box ones. Which is, of course... <laughs> and even has this cover art you know, that I like. Yeah, I bought this back in 2008 when it was on sale at Kmart. At a very good price, you know, when I started getting Blu-rays back then. Yeah. So it's one of my earlier Blu-rays that I bought, and, and it was great. It was definitely worth it. And <laughs> check out this movie. It's um, it's a fun film. You never get tired of it. You always remember all the quotes that they mentioned in the film. Anything that you that you're hoping what's going to happen did happen, and you just can't help but love it. 
One memorable scene I would say was when Ralphie was listening to a, a little Orphan Annie uh, radio broadcast where he actually heard a, a contest uh, saying that they were going to send a encode message um, by mail. So they were going to give him the, the encoder and you know, that way he'll be able to write it you know, by going into the bathroom, trying to lock the door in, and trying to write down the secret message on the notebook pad. And, and it turned out to be, as we speak, how to drink your Ovaltine. That's it? A crummy commercial? Son of a bitch! <laughs> yeah. I feel sorry for Ralphie, though. I mean, he, he's been going through a lot of troubles, you know, you know, during the, the holiday season. And, and it's just a shame. He, you know, despite of how good everything was going for, but, huh, man, family was really like this, too. You know, he had to deal with a lot of troubles just trying to get the Red Rider BB gun. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's it's like that, too, um, during Christmas. But it's one of those times when you know you want to have a good Christmas, even if you don't get the gift or not. But everybody in this movie was, was, was very zany and, and funny and, and awesome. You just really love to have a family like this. Somehow. Um, and also another scene I, I also love was when um, Ralphie's brother, you know, Randy, started ranting about how he's eating meatloaf and, and he hates eating meatloaf. And and they're telling him not to play with his food. And then there was a scene where where uh, Mrs. Parker taught him something about, you know, had Randy, you know, act like a pig and starts to eat the whole entire food that way yeah it, it was fun I, I, I love the cast yeah. Deborah McGavin did an awesome job playing the old man himself and it's sad that he's no longer with us and, and he was such a great actor and Melinda Dillon you know, tremendous yeah. went on to do a lot of films in, in her career and she, she was really you know, something playing the, the mother yeah, Ralphie was awesome, without a doubt. I mean, Peter Binsley did an awesome job playing him. Considering that this would have been his second movie prior to all the other stuff he was doing. I think, yeah, he was doing a horror film before that. And he was in a TV show called Real People in the 80s. He was even in a Hershey's commercial. Yeah, a Hershey's chocolate syrup commercial. Where he's making um, chocolate milk. I remember seeing that commercial too. Uh, you can even look for it on YouTube if you get a chance. Yeah, er everybody was was great. You know, awesome, funny, never get old. So, all I can say is, check out A Christmas Story when it airs on TV, especially on TBS on Christmas Eve. Or even buy the Blu-ray, by any chance, or DVD, VHS, um, and... And if anybody have HD DVDs, you know, get it as well, or any other format you need. Because this movie never gets old. Especially on Christmas Day. And that's a plus. So I give A Christmas Story, surprisingly awesome, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.